Having owned the M1 Max MacBook Pro and using it every day in conjunction with a base model Mac Studio, I have a pretty good sense of how the M1 Max processor feels in terms of speed and everyday usage. And believe me, I was tempted to buy the M1 Ultra and I'm so glad I didn't blow $5,000 speccing out one of those machines because the M1 Max has been such a solid performer for me on daily creative tasks like using Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe InDesign. Using these every day has been a dream and DaVinci Resolve for video production, Lightroom for raw photography processing. Pretty much all of my creative content creating tasks, it's been a beast. And now to see how far things have gone in just one year we now have the m2 max macbook pro and i purchased one to test it out against my base model mac studio to see if it's really worth upgrading and i really hope you watched my previous video on five reasons why you really should just skip m2 and wait for m3 if you haven't seen that yet please watch it i really think if you currently have an m1 machine you should just simply wait do not upgrade to the M2. And if you're currently on Intel, well, you should go ahead and buy an M1 Max machine for a steal right now. But again, watch my other video for more on that. Today's video is sponsored by OVO. OVO is a company based in North Carolina that is the top provider of quality American-made technology support products. Known for their sleek finish and easy installation, OVO strives to find quality solutions for simple problems with their computer mounts and cable management options. OVO sent me this amazing under the desk laptop holder from my M2 Max MacBook Pro, which has helped solve my cable management and desk base woes. I mean, check out how it used to look on top of my desk. Not very professional at all. And since all the cables stay under your desk and out of sight rather than up and over your desk, it allows for a much cleaner work environment aesthetically. They also make under the desk mounts for Mac Studio and other small peripherals. OVO is a truly great brand to get behind, so be sure to use my links down below when purchasing these amazing products. Now back to the video. All right, so why don't we go ahead and jump to the tests. We'll be looking into three creative tasks that I normally do in photography and video production. In spec wise, we're looking at the 16 inch M2 Max MacBook Pro. It has a 12 core CPU, eight performance cores, four efficiency cores, a 38 core GPU and a 16 core neural engine. And for the base Mac Studio, we're looking at a 10 core CPU, eight performance cores, two efficiency cores, a 24 core GPU, and a 16 core neural engine. They both have the exact same memory bandwidth at 400 gigabits per second. Both also have the same built-in encoders for video. All right, so for test one, we are going to import and process thumbnails for 1048 megapixel Canon R5 RAW files. So we're gonna do that first on the Mac Studio. And it does it, you can see the time there, but I'll bring up a chart here at the end of this little segment. And then we did it on the M2 Max, the exact same RAW files to see how these two machines compare. And this is a really processor heavy, hungry task to have both of these machines chug through 1,000 raw images. And you can see the Max Studio at five minutes 15 and the M2 at one minute 38. And then the next test, we apply four masks to 286 of these raw images. This is using Lightroom's AI tool to find the face, the eyes, the teeth, the background to apply the same 
processing to all of these images. This is a really cool tool that I've been using. I use this daily with headshot photography. And I've noticed that the M1 Max, it takes a good amount of time. So I had to take a few breaks there while it was doing that. And then on the M2 Max, I noticed that it was a little bit faster. Not crazy though. I mean, not crazy amount faster. And so I'm speeding this footage up to show you how this works. But this is a really cool test because this takes a lot of time to process this many and apply these masks. It looks at each individual image and smartly figures out where the masks should be and how to apply them. So it's really cool to see how Lightroom, how far Lightroom has come and having an M1 Max or an M2 Max really helps to have this go faster. As you can see here, the results, M2 Max at eight minutes, 27, Max Studio. And then you can see the export of those actual raw files too. The last test is 4K footage. I created a timeline in DaVinci Resolve. This is H.265, 244 footage applying some color grading and noise reduction. Noise reduction really makes a machine chug, especially for H.265 footage. So this is a really good test. Scrubbing through the timeline on the 4K footage and 8K, I added a little bit of 8K in there too. Um, there's really not a big difference scrubbing through the timeline between the Mac Studio and the M2 Max. The gains came a little bit in the export time, as you can see. So I'm exporting the footage from the Mac Studio and now here the M2 Max. And so the difference here is very interesting to me. So shaved off some time on the M2 Max at three minutes 16, four minutes 41 on the Mac Studio. So there you have it. There are some gains, but they definitely are not earth shattering for daily creative tasks. The speed improvements in most things are imperceptible in daily use. I mean, there are definitely some gains though when you look at it. So again, I encourage you to keep your M1 Max or Pro, keep creating with it, do the things you love. The M3 will be here sooner than you think. If you have any questions for me on this M2 Max MacBook Pro, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you guys so much for hanging with me today. As always, if you enjoyed today's content, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell to get notified when I drop new content. And I can't wait to see every one of you on my next video.